tissues are defined as uh, similar cells uh, and their substance that is extracellular substance around them and they are performing same function these cells and their extracellular substance is collectively called as a tissue so there are uh, about four types of tissues and these tissues they are uh, having different characteristics they are classified differently on the basis of their cell shapes and the extracellular material type of the extracellular material so there are few terms like uh, histology biopsy and autopsy histology is the uh, study of structure of a tissue under microscope and the biopsy is getting a tissue from a living organism in order to study to diagnose a tumor or any other damaging tissue and the autopsy is getting tissue from the uh, dead animal in order to study its uh, tissue for uh, the uh, to know about the reason of death so as we know there are four types of tissues they are epithelium connective tissue muscles and nerves nervous tissue these tissues they develop from uh, the germs layer that form during uh, development at gestation and these germ layers we know there are three germ layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm in triploblastic organisms so ectoderm give rise to nervous tissue it give rise to sensory epithelium of eyes ear nose and it gives rise to epidermis hair nail memory and cutaneous glands epithelium of sinuses oral and nasal cavities intra oral glands tooth enamel so we can collectively say that ectoderm give rise to it has two main portions sensory ectoderm uh, so nervous uh, neuroectoderm and the uh, somatoectoderm so neuroectoderm give rise to all the things that are related with nervous system and the somatoectoderm give rise to all the uh, rest of the epithelial tissues and mesoderm give rise to muscles and connective tissues so all the derivatives that are from connective tissue like bone cartilage blood dentine pulp cementum periodontal and uh, these are are uh, uh, arising from mesoderm endoderm give rise to the gi tract epithelium and associated glands that are the glands that are present inside of the body epithelial tissues have a unique type of characteristic by which we can distinguish them from other types of tissue and uh, tissues under microscope so these uh, characteristics they are that the epithelial tissues they have more cells and very less extracellular substances cells are bound very close together and there are very less interstitial spaces between cells and the extracellular material it is only present in the form of a thin layer scotch tape like uh, layer on which the cells are residing this scotch tape like uh, extracellular material uh, is called as basement membrane so the epithelium it covers internal and external surfaces that in the form of epithelium in the form mesothelium endothelium epithelium that is present on the uh, surfaces that are exposed outside of the uh, environment endothelium like skin uh, in case of epithelium it is skin or the internal lining of the gut and the that are exposed to external environment the lining of respiratory system lining of the reproductive system they are in the form of epithelium endothelium are the uh, surfaces of the tubes that are not exposed to external environment for example the uh, 
internal lining of the blood vessels and mesothelium are the uh, membranes serous membrane as we studied previously these mesothelium are the line uh, these are the membranes they are lined by epithelium and this epithelial tissue is called as mesothelium because it is uh, lining the uh, organs from inside so then the epithelium it provides almost all glands there are few exception to these uh, things like the glands that arise from connective tissue but rest of the glands either they are in the form of uh, they are derived from nervous tissue or they derive directly from epithelium because the new nervous system also arises from epithelium so almost all glands are from epithelial tissue and then the blood vessel do not enter into the epithelium there are very less nervous cells in entering or going near to epithelium they are mostly at the base of the epithelial cells when the epithelial cells are epithelial cells are acting as the sensory cell so blood vessels are not entering into epithelium tissue so epithelium tissues they are mostly dependent on the connective tissue beneath them in order to get their nourishment and gases they are very regenerative mean they have uh, increased regeneration than the other type of uh, tissues they heal very early they repair very early as compared to other tissues they are mostly regenerating there is a cycle of the cell so cell they die and new cell take their place epithelial tissues have polarity in their cell structures their cell surfaces are distinct that there is a top surface a bottom surface and there are lateral surfaces so the top surface is called as apical surface it is exposed to exterior of body or other internal spaces it is a free surface most of the time so we can say it is exposed surface so it is a distinct surface and then the basal surface it is mostly attached with basement membrane and it is uh, different than top surface and it help to anchor the uh, epithelial cells into the uh, underlying connective tissue and it is called as internal surface and the lateral surface it is attached to other cells so it is different than uh, the uh, top surface and the basal surface it has distinct type of junction with other cells that are called as gap junction that are the passage way between two cells tight junction that are helping to provide the barrier and desmosomes that are for the attachment Uh, so epithelium provide physical protection from abrasion, uh, from dehydration, from destruction. We know the skin is providing these. things abrasion uh, protection from abrasion dehydration and destruction and we know there are mesothelial serous membranes and these membranes they protect the organs they reduce friction and in case of uh, the lumens of the uh, organs uh, and or the coverings so they are protecting organs physically they produce uh, mucosa Uh, mucus gland so, uh, they have mucus uh, they provide mucus gland for the production of mucus that have to uh, protect the physical damages then they also provide barrier they control permeability membrane absorption in case of epithelial tissue is selective 
and they have tight junction between them so they do not allow material easily and they allow certain material pass and not and then uh, they also help in sensation they provide sensation like uh, the sensory nerve endings they uh, get into the epithelial cells and then they help to feel pain pressure temperature and touch these all four uh, function of sensation they are provided by epithelial cells that are attached to the nerve cells or neurons then they uh, the uh, epithelial tissue they uh, screed and uh, we know they are all most all of the glands they are epithelial in nature so they may produce secretions like mucus serous fluid in between the parietal and the uh, visceral serous membrane saliva hormones almost all hormones sweet uh, it is sweat and skin oils and then milk tears they are provided by the epithelial tissue and secondly the specialized structure that comes from epithelium are like cilia microvilli and they also epithelial tissue they help in absorption and filtration we know the glomerulus and bowman capsule they are epithelial in nature so the filtration is done in kidneys in nephron through epithelial tissue absorption is when the cells they reabsorb like in, in the nephron the cells that reabsorb so the material that was uh, filtered out into uh, the bowman capsule so this reabsorption is done by epithelial cells and we know the absorption in intestine is also done by epithelial cells that are having microvilli so epithelial tissue is classified uh, by two ways uh that is the number of cell layers and cell shape and sometime by transition of their shapes so the epithelials they are given really two names on the basis of cell shape and on the basis of the cell layers number of cell layers. on the basis of cell layers the epithelial tissue is classified into simple stratified or pseudo stratified simple epithelium they have single layer of cells stratified they have multiple layers of cells and pseudo stratified are the epithelial tissues that have single layer cells but their cells are uh, in the cell length and the uh, positioning of nuclei make them to appear as a stratified so they are called as pseudo stratified false stratified so the simple epithelium uh, we'll see them later where they are present then on the basis of cell shape the cells could be squamous cuboidal or columnar squamous mean they are flat cells and cuboidal cube like columnar they are taller column shape and then we have transitional epithelium transitional epithelium is an epithelium that stretches and recoil and it permits for example in case of uh, urinary tract the urinary bladder it uh, permits urinary bladder to recoil after stretching so the uh, because these organs they are for the storage of the urine that is usually present in large quantity so the when there is less urine in uh, urinary bladder it is in uh, recoil form and when it is filled the cells they are arranged 
that decide that they slip on each other they were like stratified and then they slip uh, the layers they slip on each other and then they become like simple epithelium so they are called in order to store more quantity of urine so they are called as transitional epithelium transition mean they change their shape their cell layers cell shape so they become stretched when there is a lot of urine and when urine is passed out they again require and make cell uh, columnar or cuboidal and the number of cell layers is also increased so these type of tissues they are present in urine bladder in kidneys in ureters here we can see that the simple epithelium it could be simple squamous simple cuboidal simple columnar so epithelium are given two names simple squamous means single layer squamous cell flat cell simple cuboidal simple columnar single layer cuboidal or single layer columnar cell then stratified more than one layer of cell they are squamous and they are stratified cuboidal sometime they occur and stratified columnar they are also very less so most of the time it is stratified squamous the flat cells so these squamous they could be moist or they could be keratinized the moist squamous epithelium is present inside the uh, blood vessels and it is the uh, it is not uh, dead it is living it is uh, making internal covering in the uh, keratinized squamous stratified epithelium is uh, having a protein that is called as keratin keratin that is the uh, that is present in uh, dead cells so these are two types of stratified squamous epithelium then pseudo stratified these epithelium they are modification of simple epithelium as we know they are single layer cells columnar cells the height of the cell is different and then the uh, positioning of uh, nuclei in different cells is different so they appear to be stratified so they are called as pseudo stratified they are only columnar type of pseudo stratified columnar then we have transitional epithelium that is modification of stratified epithelium these cells they appear to be cuboidal or columnar when they are not stretched when there is no urine in urinary bladder or various urine in urinary bladder and they become squamous when there is a stretch there is a force of urine so there is when a lot of urine come into the urinary bladder it become Uh, the cells become flat comes from a slide so they are called as transitional epithelium here we can see a simple squamous epithelium it is single layered flat cells so these flat cells they are residing on a basement membrane that is a thin layer extracellular material and beneath it is layers of connective tissue so we here we can see the cells they are flat cells so they are very fragile they are single layer so they are very fragile they are lining the cavities in the form of serous membranes and they are present in blood vessel like uh, capillaries and in uh, other membranes so they are very fragile here we can see a simple cuboidal epithelium like that is present in Uh, pancreas here we can see so these cells they are cube like and then there is a basement membrane a thin layer basement membrane and then there is connective tissue beneath so blood vessel they are passing through connective tissue they are not going into epithelium so these cells they are single layer and they are mostly these are present in glands like in pancreas and other glands for they they are to store 
to secrete and to absorb because they have a lot of uh, volume because they are cubes they can uh, store the products and then they can release them into blood or into the digestive system or any other place so these are these are simple cuboidal they are present in plants the simple columnar epithelium is present in the digestive tract in urinary tract in bronchi in uterus these are the columnar cells the longer cells here we can see another type of simple columnar epithelium their apical surfaces they have cilia so these are present in reproductive tract in fallopian tubes or uterine tubes uh, in order to move the eggs in toward uterus so these cilia they move and they help the egg to move uh, we can see a lot of uh, layers of uh, this stratified squamous epithelium and so it is called as stratified cells are flat but they are more in layers then there is a basement membrane and then there is a connective tissue beneath and these epithelium uh, tissue they are present in the body parts where there are chances of abrasion uh, so these uh, organs they are like the skin the mouth and vagina and so these epithelium they may be moist they may be keratinized so keratin is a protein that is present on in the dead cell that are present on skin but uh, so it is called as uh, the keratinize and the uh, in case of uh, vagina and the mouth uh, or the buccal cavity the squamous stratified squamous epithelium is moist uh, it is secreting fluids in order to keep the surfaces uh, moist then we have stratified cuboidal epithelium the cuboidal cells in more than one layer and they are again attached to the basement membrane and then because they have a lot of volume so these are present in gland ducts and they are very rare and then we have stratified columnar epithelium the columnar cells they are present in stratified form Uh, in more than one layer so they are again attached to a basement membrane that is the extracellular material and then there is a connective tissue beneath so these are present in the body parts that again have more abrasion uh, like pharynx anus and the esophagus and other digestive system parts of the digestive system it is the most durable epithelium it can withstand with Uh, a lot of uh, physical uh, abrasions uh, here you can see pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and this epithelium is made up of columnar cells these cells they have different uh, lengths and then they have the different arrangement of their nuclei few of the cell they have nucleus uh, superior and few have at the inferior surfaces near basement membrane so these cells they also have uh, cilia they are mostly present in trachea and they have goblet cell in between them so they are for release of mucus and they are single layer but they appear to be multi layer due to the arrangement of uh, nuclei Here we can see transitional epithelium. So these are the apical surfaces of the cells, and then they appear to be multi-layered cells are uh, cuboidal in shape. And when there would be pressure, these layers they would slip on each other, and these cells they become flat rather than cuboidal. So they will increase the volume of urinary bladder. have seen previously that the cell layers and shapes of the cells of epithelial tissue 
is dependent on the location and requirement. So, the case with the services, they are also uh, modified uh, on the basis of the requirement. For example, the apical surface, that is the exposed surface of the cell, or unattached surface of the free surface of the cell, would be smooth. Uh, that is having no CDR microvilli. It could have cilia, or it is having microvilli. We know CDR for the movement of material, like in the product tract. We saw the cells they have CDR case of respiratory tract. There are CDR. So in uh, there could be microvilli on the cell surfaces, like in the intestines, more intestine for increasing the surface area for absorption. And we know the structure of CD and microvilli. They are provided by cytoskeleton. Then uh, the uh, basal or and lateral surfaces, they have connection with either extracellular material or with the other cells. So they have cell junction or connection, and we are familiar with those cell junctions. These cell connection or junction, they are uh, specialized cell adhesion molecules. They attach cell membrane to other cell membrane proteins or to the basement membrane. So they are uh, about uh, four types. Like they could be gap junction, they could be tight junction, they could be desmosome. So desmosomes are hemidesmosomes. They are uh, the desmosomes are most common in skin. They connect cell by protein, and these proteins are then bound to internal cytoskeletal filaments. They are very strong. We have seen them previously. So they are very strong. They resist twisting and stretching, and they are present. Uh, they are called desmosome when they are provided by both cells that are found uh, side to side with each other. And they are called as hemidesmosome when they are present on the basal surface of the cell that are getting attached to the basement membrane. Then we have uh, the tight junction. They are uh, the proteins that attach uh, two cells together firmly and it prevents water passage of fluid or water between two cells. It allows only passage through cells. So these are providing barriers. They are two uh, zones, zona adherens and zona prudens. We have seen them previously. They are made up of glycoproteins and they are again attacked with the internal uh, cytoskeleton that is the intermediate proteins. and then there are gap junctions gap junctions are present in cardiac and smooth muscles also and epithelial cells also and in epithelial cell the function of these gap junction is unknown they are bridges between two cells for passage of material and these uh, they are made up of proteins and the small particles and ions they can pass from one cell to another cell but in case of epithelium the function is mostly unknown so here we can see them these junction like the gap junction they are protein bridges between cells and then we have the tight junction they are stitching of the two cell membrane proteins are stitching the cell membranes and then these proteins they are passing from one cell uh, uh, on one side stitching two membranes and then going from back side to another two membranes and stitching them and so on so then they are not allowing passage of material from here they allow passage of material from here like in intestine because most of the substances that comes in food they could be antigenic so they should not come directly into blood 
they should come through cells so that cells will process them and lead them into the cell processing them will allow some substances to go into the blood and not allow various other to go into the blood. If they would come through these uh, intercellular spaces, then they can cause the uh, immune shock to the body. Or poisonous material they could come back into blood. Then we have the uh, desmosomes and hemidesmosomes. Desmosomes are present between two cells. These proteins they are linked with the internally with cytoskeleton, and then these fibers they are provided by both cells, and they are attaching to membranes in the form of a glue. But in case of uh, hemidesmosome, it is the base of the cell that is attached with base. So this protein is only provided by cells because the basement membrane it is the extracellular material it is not living so it cannot provide any protein so proteins are provided by these cells so they are called as hemi or half desmosome as epithelium also have a function of secretion in the form of glands so these glands they are uh, either endocrine or exocrine, they could be multicellular, they could be unicellular. And for example, the uh, unicellular glands they secrete mucus, multicellular glands they release uh, various hormones and the excretion in an uh, exocrine manner. First of all, we have to see the origin of glands. These glands, they originate from epithelium. We know when there is epithelium, it is not having blood vessels. So there is uh, connective tissue beneath. So the epithelium during development, it invaginate into connective tissue. And then with the development, these uh, epithelium, that are the imaginated part, they are either having a connection with the mother epithelium or it, the connection is cut. So, if the imaginated part or gland is having connection with mother epithelium, then it is called as exocrine. Exocrine means the glands that can release their secretion on the surface of the mother epithelium from which it is originated. So the exocrine, they because they have connection with the uh, their mother epithelium, they are called as duct gland because they have these ducts to release their product back into onto the surface of mother epithelium. Where in glands where this connection is cut during development, these glands they don't have a connection with mother epithelium. They don't have a duct. They are called as ductless gland. They are called as endocrine gland because they release their secretion inside. Endocrine means they are releasing their secretion outside and they can these endocrine they cannot release their secretion outside on the uh, surface of mother epithelium. They don't have duct, they are ductless, don't have connection with mother epithelium. They have to release their uh, secretion inside and here because it is connective tissue in which it was imaginated so the connective tissue they are highly vascularized meaning they have a lot of blood vessels so these glands endocrine they release their secretion in their interstitial spaces and then blood takes their secretion to the other parts of the body so they are called as endocrine endocrine and endocrine so exocrine have connection with mother epithelium they are duct gland and they are uh, releasing most of the time enzymes and other secretions like uh, the uh, digestive uh, glands it's library gland pancreas pancreas have double function it is having uh, exocrine portion and endocrine portion in case of endocrine the connection between mother epithelium is cut they are ductless gland and they are releasing hormones so we know the hormones are chemical messengers and they travel 
when they travel in blood they are called as endocrine hormone so uh, we know a lot of hormones like oxytocin it is growth hormone insulin they all are the endocrine glands they are uh, like uh, digestive glands they, they release saliva mucus milk sweat and these glands as we saw they could be multicellular or unicellular unicellular like goblet cells they are present scattered into uh, the tissue and they are each cell is releasing its products multicellular mean they are uh, made up of multicellular so these uh, there is classification of these glands and we are talking about the uh, glands that are simple compound tubular or acinar and the tubes they could be straight or coiled we will see them on the next slide and on the basis of speech and the uh, exocrine glands they could be classified into neurocrine apocrine or holocrine we will see them later on the glands here we can see uh, a single gland cell and these cells they are like goblet cell they are unicellular glands so in multicellular glands the uh, they are called as simple if the ducts have a uh, few branches and if they are branched repeatedly then they are called as compound so the glands they multicellular glands they could be simple when they have less branches of their uh, ducts and if they have more branches then they are called as compound simple and compound the next classification is that the internal structure or the ducts they ends up in tubes or in sac like structure if they ends up in tubes then they are called as tubular they are uh, simple tubular or they could be compound tubular or if they ends up in sac like structure then they are called as sni sni are uh, the uh, grape like structure so uh, if it is not tube it is grape like structure then it is called as sni and the gland is called as simple snr or it is called as compound snr so then these uh, uh, uh the tubular glands they are having another classification either these tubes they are straight or they are wild so these are the three uh, basic criteria for the classification of multi uh, structure of multicellular glands they could be uh, simple if their ducts are not uh, very dry and if the ducts are very dry a lot of branches are present then they are called as compound glands if the internal structure is tube like then they are called as tubular if internal structure is grape like or sac like then they are called as snr so it could be simple straight tubular they could be simple branch tubular they could be simple coiled tubular if the tube is coiled they could be simple snr they could be simple branch snr they could be compound tubular they could be compound snr they could be compound uh, tubulo snr that is having both characteristics of tube and sni on the basis of excretion uh, or mode of excretion the endocrine glands uh, they could be divided into merocrine apocrine and holocrine mero mean uh, crime mean they release only chemical that is their products so uh, no part of cell or the cell itself is being released in secretion in case of apocrine 
apo mean apical surface apocrine uh, the apical surface of the cell pin that pinches off along with secretion and become part of secretion like in membrane gland holocrine mean whole cell get detached from the gland and it becomes part of the uh, secretion and along with its product in it so like in spacious gland so the merocrine glands or merocrine they are most common they secrete uh, pure product only because they are not releasing any part of the cell so secretory vesicle as we know they are present and they are synthesized within cell so these secretory vesicle they go off by exocytosis these glands they are like salivary gland mucus gland serous glands that are uh, producing serous fluid and mucus gland we know they are uh, like the, the goblet cells and salivary gland that is present in buccal cavity for production of saliva and sweat glands they are the most abundant and they are uh, producing sweat and then the uh, apocrine uh, they are uh, the vesicles they when they get released they break off the apical surface of the cell and so they take the material uh, along with the part of the cell so uh, memory glands they are the apocrine type of cell and they, there are few sweat glands that are also like in groin uh, these are uh, the type of glands uh, these uh, sweat glands that takes part of the that take part of the cell with them so that the uh, smell and odor is produced in the groin and axilla and then holocrine they are uh, odorous type of meat they produce a lot of uh, the smell because the cell they get burst into the secretion they become part of the secretion so they are oily uh, exocrine glands uh, secrete in four types of secretions they could be serous secretion mucus secretion secretion or cytogenic secretion serous as the name shows are the serum that are the watery these uh, glands they are called as serous glands and they are present in body cavities like for the production of serous fluid between parietal and visceral serous membrane we know in thoracic cavity there are uh, parietal uh, uh, pleural membrane around the lungs and then the visceral pleural membrane so in between them is the serous fluid that is produced by serous uh, glands and then the pericardial membrane is also serous membrane peritoneal membrane is serous membrane so in between them is the serous fluid that is produced by these glands uh, or the cell lining these membrane and these watery medium that are the serous fluid they contain uh, many enzymes they reduce friction as you know so they are having uh, these uh, glands they are also present in digestive system in salivary such as salivary glands there are uh, watery medium and then the serous enzymes like the mineral tylen is present so, and then they are also for uh, present in uh, memory glands for production of milk they are in eyes for the production of tears and then they are the glands that are producing digestive juices in the stomach they are serous secretions and 
we are not putting by serious plants. So serious secretions are milk, clear, digestive juices, slimy uh, enzymes, and serous food present in the uh, serous membranes. And then there are mucus secretion. Uh, they are from mucus glands that are present at the passageways or uh, in the body and uh, of the material in the body and out of the body. So these uh, mucus, they are mucus is a secretion that is viscous type of colloid that contain inorganic solid antimicrobial enzymes such as lysozyme and various antibodies that are immunoglobulin, glycoproteins and a special type of protein that is called as mucin. So these uh, mucus help to protect epithelial cells in the lining of respiratory digestive urogenital system and they help the uh, auditory system uh, visual system and they protect them from pathogenic uh, bacteria fungi viruses so most of the mucus is uh, produced in GIT tract so the mucus uh, is produced from unicellular glands and these unicellular glands they are called as uh, goblet cells and the gland, these glands they are originated from epithelial cells so the mucus glands they are present in small intestine in trachea in passages base in the uh, in reproductive tract and in the uh, urinary tract and, and, and then we have mixed uh, type of secretion the glands that produce mixed type of secretion they are also called as mixed exocrine gland so they secrete both serous and mucus for example the salivary glands they produce uh, saliva and uh, also the uh, few parts of mucus so they are mixed and then the cytogenic glands cytogenic are entirely different they release whole cells for example the glands of, that are testes and ovaries they release whole cells that are sperms and eggs. So these are the exocrine secretions.